Marshall Breeze in the house. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Yes, he is. We're called to worship this morning. Let us, let us do what we do every Sunday. The 23rd Sunday. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As members of this community of, of College Hill and, and surrounding communities in the city of Lynchburg, this morning before we pray, let, let us lift up to God just how important it has been that He's provided a place for us. Amen, somebody. <laughs> he provided a Savior for us, and His name is Jesus. <laughs> We would have so much to say about him. But he has also provided this place uh, for us. Is that the hot seat? Hey. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, this is sizzling. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As you know, Brother Ronaldo is excited this morning. He's been excited for quite a while now uh, since. Since he had his first couple of rounds with cancer, amen. And, 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 amen, somebody, amen, amen, amen. Amen. And he's, 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 he's claiming victory all throughout the whole fight because he knew uh, that his corner man was God and his cut man was Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and, and the one that was giving him instructions was the Holy Ghost. And so he knew he had the victory. And he's excited about, you know, what God has done and what God is doing and what God plans to do. Geraldine Coleman. I started back here and I was, I've been 84 years. Mm -hmm. 84 years. It went, I'm going to say a week because I'm speaking of my sisters and my brother. We were invited, first of all, Mother brought us to church at Tennessee many, many times. But then as we as she as we got a little bit older, she, she stopped coming. But when we got here, we were met by so many wonderful adults. The thing about these adults were people we knew. They were our neighbors. One lived around the corner from me. One lived up the street by the cemetery. 
got here that made us feel so much at home is they cared for us, they took care of us, they taught, they made us, um, they shared us, and they shaped us, and they molded us. We learned so much, they corrected us when we did wrong, they taught us how to sing, how to recite, stand up, do the best that you can, and all that kind of good stuff. But we had educators, the choir was built educators. We had people who owned their own businesses, we had uh, insurance agents, we got a medical team in there. But we had all we had all of this. And they just took care of us as we were growing up. And then they let us, they took time to let us take part and participate in church activities. I remember that when the ushers were ushering and collecting money, that little tots, the little glass jar, they would walk beside the usher and people would give them change. They drop change in the jar. Then as I got older, I became a teenage usher. We were invited to the homes. And the usher for me, not at church, we were met at homes. And teenage, we were allowed to go and meet with them. And they just made us part of them. And that's been going on for years and years and years. And I'm just so thankful for this church. It's almost like home away from home. If anything you did wrong, you got to get the fire smooth. They got hold of us, but they took care of business for us. I'm just so grateful. This is what I call home. 84 years. I've seen the changes. There's some wonderful ministers, parishioners, people that care for you and embrace you. They shaped us. started roaming around the city looking. We went to several churches, visited them, and somehow or other we stumbled into Jackson Street Church. And I 
never will forget as long as I live, sitting over on this side of the church were several, and I'm not going to call them women, I'm going to call them ladies, who had little Clarice. And I couldn't get in the door with little Clarice before Miss Maddie Lee had little Clarice. And she took care of little Clarice until little Clarice got to be big Clarice. <laughs> and then she took care of little David until little David got to be big David. So Jackson Street became a family for us. And they really pushed us. Uh, I had a mentor who used to sit right in the middle aisle here when the first play at Dunbar. And the first thing he asked me, are you doing your graduate work yet? I said, yes, I am. I have been rolling graduate school. He said, good because there are some opportunities for you in the city. But not only were there opportunities for me in the city, there were opportunities for me in the church. They involved, I got involved in the church. The first thing I became was the chairman of the administrative board. And then I became lay leader and everything else, chairman of finance, chairman of trustees, and worked in the six, what was it, seven, seven to four. And we decided to do a renovation and build a Parson over here to the right of the church. We tore down the old parsonage, and guess what? As we used to say in old days, they put the big hat on me. <laughs> that was my responsibility <laughs> to see that the parson was built, to see that the church was renovated, and to purchase the property across the street. So I got involved in all the political action in the city through Jackson Street Church. We loved the church, we worked in the church. I never will forget how we worked with the children through the church. And I look at Miss Thurston, we she came about the same time I did. We really put our efforts in the church. We love Jackson Street. We work to make Jackson Street the church we want it to be. Thank you. chapter 17 verse 26 and it says this and he made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings mm -hmm. four years ago I met this gentleman that is your pastor and uh, uh, I am so honored to call him my friend. Um, of course, <laughs> whenever I get around reason, uh, we're probably going to laugh just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. And so I know the scripture says laughter is his medicine to the bones. Yes. Meaning that the bones are producing the white corpuscles. Well, anytime I feel like I'm a little down, I'm going to go hang out with this guy and laugh a little bit because, you know, he helps me with a lot of different things. So I'm just so thankful uh, for how God has brought reason, reason into my life. Um, and we're doing other things together and uh, we went together on a bus trip and I know he probably has spoken to you uh, at least on several occasions about that bus trip. Um, but it was one of those most powerful experiences that I've had where um, black and white walk together you and they leave you with one scripture. It's found in, also in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, And they steadfastly continued in the apostles' doctrine 
in the breaking of bread and the fellowship and in prayer. Uh, Fifty days from the resurrection, everybody knew the Apostles' Doctrine. We're 2,000 years or so from the Apostles' Doctrine. And I believe we have to reverse that order. I need to pray with you. I need to fellowship with you. I need to break bread together with you. And if I choose to do that, then we can talk about a whole lot of things that might make us different. Why is it so important to do it that way? Because friendships are more important than our disagreements. Amen. The respect that we have for each other is more important than our disagreements. So thank you for loving on this guy for, what, eight years now? Almost ten. 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 For loving on him and allowing him to love me. And uh, it's been a real special bond and uh, uh, it's not going to go away, nor is it going to decrease. So. God bless you. Thank you very much. testimony of people before me who have been in this church for years. We have seen this church through its highs and its lows. But one thing they all can attest to, we are a steadfast church. Get not. We are low in numbers. But we have a rock here. We have a foundation. We have a foundation, and we will grow again. Just to hold that foundation. But what I want to talk to you about is our history. 156 years since 1866. We're approaching 200 years of doing God's work. I feel an aura, a presence every time I come in this church because there have been so many people before us. When I was gathering and getting information about the history of this church, my first thought was, this is a church for the times. Not just because of the age, but because of what it has done through the ages. The grass has been around forever. Only thing it really said is dead cows. <laughs> but that was good too. Mm -hmm. But this church has fed people. Not just with the sustenance of food, but with the Holy Spirit. In the late 1800s, Reverend George Lewis was sent to Lynchburg by the annual conference to assemble a group of Methodists first meeting that was held at Thomas Chapel. On October the 2nd, 1886, John McDaniel laid the first cornerstone for the church at its present site. And three years later, here we are from 1866. We are worshiping in the same all started. Uh, just to show you some relevance, relevance to this, um, I have uh, on my father's side ministers, pastors. I've seen, uh, I attended a church, still go every now and then, Crossroads Baptist Church, where there's been a member of my family in that church ever since this conception. I remember going there when they had the old church. Now when you go down there, they had that 
really nice. It's a nice new church. I mean, it's, hey, they're still carrying on the work of God. But I come here, and it's the same building. And it's standing strong. It's standing strong. Do you understand who sat in here before you? There were a lot of people affiliated with this church, especially through the Renaissance. All that was happening there with uh, Ann Spencer, her group. Uh, well, we had some prominent people here at this church. The second president of Virginia, Virginia State was here, came through this church. Uh, we had a, an organization that was started here. What was it started? But they would do seminars. And it what what put into action what set off Jackson Street being a very prominent church educating the Afro American in Central Virginia. We ran a Freeman school doing reconstruction at the time. The first graduating class of the Afro American High School was held in the basement here. We uh, were very prominent in the uh, starting of, which is now uh, University of Virginia at Lynchburg, but it was a Virginia seminary. Before that, it was uh, Virginia Collegiate Institute, um, which was a branch of Morgan State University, at that time, Morgan College. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't Morgan, Morgan College. It was a seminary, it was a centenary biblical seminary where you would go to become a pastor or a minister. Well, that site was set up in what is now Fairview Heights, which was not Lynchburg, that was Campbell County. And on the site of where um, Marvin Bass School is, that was the first seminary, which we call it well, which we know it as. Well, the school burned down. Jackson Street mortgage property to pay the debt. God doing his work. Mm. You know, I, to me, in, in this era, we talk about people and organizations who were in the forefront for our rights as a race, as a people, as a culture. I feel that we are right up here with Martin Luther King. We are. If it was not for Jackson Street, you would have had teachers in Lynchburg. There would be nothing that you would do in your life other than praise God that would be more important than what education you obtain. I'm saying you don't have to be a PhD, but you better get something between them ears. <laughs> but Jackson Street has been about that. Now to kind of bring it in today's times, do you realize from this church and its history, we've had doctors, lawyers, highly skilled people. We've had people who have served this country with distinction through the military. We've had some wonderful pastors to lead this congregation, including a female. And yet, through it all, the highs and the lows, we still stay. Oh, man. So in closing, I just want to say, I look forward to seeing you guys on October the 16th. Come celebrate with us. Amen. Come cry with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.